This is an organ. But do you know which organ? Here's a clue. Around half of the people in the world have one. But many of us, even those in the medical community, really don't know much about it. It's the clitoris, and this organ's had a complicated history with Western medicine. But it's right here in Australia where researchers are at the forefront of transforming our understanding of its anatomy. Go back to Europe in the Middle Ages, the clitoris is referred to as the devil's teat in this guide to witch hunting. For centuries, early scientists denied its importance. Later, a Dutch scientist made progress with one of the earliest accurate illustrations. And in the 19th century, German scientist Georg Kobelt finally gave an accurate description of its function. It's very curious. What you see is usually men of science doing the dissections, um, writing about the clitoris, explaining it, and then you see this knowledge lost. Like in 1948, when anatomical representations of the clitoris were removed from renowned medical textbook, Grey's Anatomy. Decades later, when Helen O'Connell went through medical school, accurate and reliable information on the clitoris was still hard to come by. The authors would describe in intense detail the anatomy of the male as though that was the normal human. There was a, a whole page on the mechanism of erection and there was almost no reference at all to the clitoris. It's just part of a woman's body that you should understand, but it also has a very special function, right? I mean, it's for pleasure and it causes orgasms. If I think about men's health, we talk about their ability, you know, sexual function, dysfunction, and rightly so. It's just curious that that is often missing or not part of the conversation when we talk about sexual function for women. Whether you're a, a general practitioner or a surgeon or a gynaecologist, Knowing what's there makes, I would think, a huge difference to the way you operate. In 1994, Professor Helen O'Connell became Australia's first woman urologist. As a young urological surgeon in the making, we spent a fair bit of time doing what we could to preserve male sexual function. And then I did a literature review to see whether anyone had looked at the equivalent nerves in women and I couldn't see anything. Back then, I was very angry. <laughs> this had to be fixed. <laughs> in 1998, Professor O'Connell led the world's first comprehensive anatomical study of the clitoris. And in 2005, using MRI scans, she published the most detailed account of its anatomy to date. We were able to bring modern science to uh, a complete focus on female genital anatomy. Professor O'Connell and her colleagues proved it wasn't just a small nub of erectile tissue. It was huge, both the clitoris and her discovery. They're actually very large nerves that you can see with the naked eye. This is the bit that we all kind of know about, which is the bit that, that is on the outside. But actually, it's a bit like an iceberg. All of this is underneath. That's the bit that Helen O'Connell described and discovered. Despite her success, Professor O'Connell remained relatively unknown publicly. But her study was pivotal for surgeons performing pelvic operations. And a new chapter began for sex researchers and educators across the world. Anita Brown Major is an occupational therapist. She helps people living with disability with their sex lives. It's really hard to see these buttons and it's really hard to turn them on and turn them off. So particularly if we're working with someone who has got um, hand problems, then that's a real issue. But she's long struggled to find the right tools to teach sex education. I, for many years, have used a puppet vulva, which actually is, shows the clitoris a pull apart at the back. So it's fabulous and it's a really complicated thing to make, but it wasn't anatomically correct. 
Anita wanted to make her own accurate model to help her clients. So she reached out to experts like Helen O'Connell and Dr Suzanne Belton. She wanted to talk with us. We wanted to talk with Jasmine Apicordia, who's based in Geneva. The group got together as a way of supporting each other of how are you making your model, what's the information that we're missing. We, we have many questions like how many nerve endings are there in a clitoris? Sometimes there's something I can answer because we looked at it. A global network of diverse healthcare professionals developed, advancing and sharing knowledge of the clitoris. And they called themselves the International Clitorati. It was just exciting to actually meet other people who were as equally as excited as me about the clitoris and the anatomy. 500 years since it was dubbed the devil's teat, Professor O'Connell says she's optimistic about an era of enlightened understanding. The new Gray's anatomy has um, started being developed and I've received an invitation to contribute to the um, clitoral anatomy for that. So that is full circle, definitely.